We're going to start with gate rotor removal now. So we're going to do one set at a time. Things to remember is you've got these small oil lines on the top. They, f they feed from the main oil feed inside the compressor. These lines bring oil over to the, to the main bearings. Okay. So we're going to, uh, we have to remove those. So I've loosened them off. So I'm just going to take these, they're just small lines. So we can just take those off. Might be a little bit of oil in them. I've taken some of these bolts out to make it a little quicker. But before we take this out, we have to position the gate rotor blade in the right place. Okay, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to remove or put back in. The other thing to remember is when we take this apart, we always take the large bearing off first, then the small one. On the reverse side, it's kind of mirrored. The large bearing is in the bottom, the small bearing is at the top. Okay, so, and this gate rotor blade will be flipped the other way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have to position this in the right place. How do we do that? We have to turn this, this rotor here till we get it in the right spot. What we're going to look for is the end of the rotor on the suction side, there's a tip of the rotor blade. We're going to look inside here and we're going to stick it, turn it until it's just a hair above the shelf. shelf. So the tip of that blade will be just a hair above the shelf. So if you can see how I'm See the tip of the blade right there? That's a tip. You can see the. There's the tip of the blade. I'm going to turn this so that tip right there, any one of them, because there's six of them, I'm going to turn this until it's just above the shelf. Just right there. Probably about a half an inch above the shelf. Right there. Now that we have that position in the right spot, I'm going to use this tool right here, which is a gate rotor support tool. I'm going to slide it in here. That will keep the gate rotor from dropping. And when we start to take the bearings out, it won't fall on your foot. Okay, so that's the role of this right here. It'll keep it from falling out. Now I'm going to take this cover off. Now I've loosened some of these off and you've got the, the bolts around the outside and you've got some socket bolts on the inside. What those are doing, the inside ones are taking this bearing housing and pulling it up tight against the top. So that is going to maintain our distance on the shelf. And in behind that you'll see the shims that I talked about earlier. Okay. So in order for me to take this cover off, I have to take all these inner, inner bolts out first. Because otherwise we're going to try and lift the whole assembly out and we don't want to do that. We won't get it out anyways. Take those out. Then we're going to take all these bolts out. The other thing that I've done is I've marked this. So it makes it easier for reassembly. You can just put it back in the same spot. Now, one of the things you'll notice on the cover is there's two threaded holes. You can take the same bolt and thread it into there and that becomes like a pusher to help you lift that cover off because it'll help lift this off like this because there's an o-ring in there and it might stick so it'll be hard to get it loose. So once you, get, you lift that off, cover comes out, there's an o-ring that sits in there. We have removed it on this, this machine just to make it easier for disassembly, that's all. But there is an o-ring that goes in there. What do I find on the top here? I have these shims that you talk, we talked about. Okay, so they sit in here. Here's the inner holes that were held by those set bolts. And there's the shims and it's going to pull this
bearing housing up against, tight up against that. Okay? So those shims determine our shelf clearance. So keep those together as per side and reassemble with the same shims and it'll, it'll give you the correct shelf clearance. We now need to remove this bearing housing with the bearings, but we have to pull it off the shaft. So we're gonna pull a, um, there's a bearing retainer on the inside here with three bolts that we're gonna take out. Okay. And we're gonna use a special puller that is going to lift this bearing assembly up off the shaft and leave the bearings in the bearing housing and the shaft will stay. So now we're gonna take this reta bearing retainer out. I've loosened off the three bolts and I've pulled this round retainer out with the three bolts. I'll take the three bolts out of it because I'm gonna reuse them right now with the puller. So we'll take those out, put this aside, and now I've got this puller assembly, okay? So it's a bar, it's like a standard kind of puller with different dimensions on it, but this, is, this one's designed for the 240 millimeter. We use this bar for a couple different ways. So we're gonna put this, what we call a pusher in there. So it's, it's kind of like this retainer, but it's a little smaller, okay? So it's going to slide in there I'm going to use these same bolts. I'll just, I don't have to make them tight. I just snug them up. And it's going to help us get, if I use the right bolts, then it would work even better, wouldn't it? Let's just turn those in there. So we've got this inner part here, the outer, this is the frame. I'm gonna try, we're going, what we're gonna try now is do is take this center part right off, okay? Pull it right off the shaft of in here. So, okay, so I'm gonna use this bar and I'm gonna set it on top. I'm gonna to use these cap screws that come with it and we're gonna thread it in to those inner holes Again, it doesn't have to be tight. This bar is made for the 240 millimeter machine, but as our machines get larger, this whole area gets larger. So we have different bars for different size machines. So then I'll just spin this down here, and it's gonna push against that center one, the part that we just pushed in, installed. And then as I turn this, it's going to, see how it's, it's just lifting this whole assembly out of there. Now, this has been apart before. It's a little easier. You might have a little harder time in the field because the O-rings might be a little sticky, okay? But, and then once it gets loose enough, you can just lift this whole assembly. Now, you can see all that is staying intact. I'm gonna pull this out. What have I done? I've taken out the bearing assembly. The two ball bearings are in here. These are the ones that we measured before that gave us zero axial clearance. These are like thrust bearings. They maintain to make sure there's no axial movement. So we can put that aside. What have we got now? We've got the, the gate rotor assembly in there, but we've pulled the main bearings off of it. Now we're going to take the bottom one off. That's the small one. I'm going to take the, these, this pusher bushing off. Put it aside with, with that assembly. So now we've got to get this bottom one off. And we have six bolts around the outside. Six. We have eight, sorry. Okay. What we're going to do, and take those out. I'll just 
sit under here and we'll use this socket here. Now remember I've got this in here holding it. This is not going to come out. And it's important to remember in this order. You need to do the large one first and the small one second. Always in that order. As machines get bigger, these get harder to move in and out, and you may need some help. But once we take this out, then we can remove the gate rotor assembly completely. Now, if you had a little angle ratchet, electric, always goes a little faster. And then, then this will drop out once we get all the bolts out. Okay, you'll probably get a little bit of oil coming out with it as well. So now you can see we have our roller bearing in here. Now you can see the roller bearing in here that we've just pulled out. Okay. So this blade now, assembly, this whole rotor. <coughs> I can pull out of there. But we're going to have to kind of support it as I pull this out. <coughs> now it's a bit of a trick. You're going to allow it to fall back on a bit of an angle. And it's not coming out really easily right now. Because remember I told you where the position had to be. The rotor is a little bit off. I'm just wiggling a little bit and it should come out of there like that. So it's a bit of an angle and out it comes. Kind of lean back. We're lifting to the to the right a little bit and back and out it comes. On the rotor, that's what we were trying to position in the right place, just above the shelf. This is the shelf that we measured. Clearance between this face here, this is our shelf. This is our dividing line between low pressure and high pressure. And now we can see the rotor with the flutes, the six flutes, and these 11 fingers fit into side here. So this is our gate rotor assembly, the blade, support, here's a bearing race from the roller bearing, and the two ball bearings are on the go on the bottom here. Okay. Okay, so you can see we've got the 11 fingers here. So different capacity machines, we'll still have the 240 millimeter, but we can have different capacity machines within the 240 millimeter. How do we do that? These fingers will be longer if the flutes are deeper on the rotor. Okay? So we get more capacity in each flute. Or we get more trap more gas in each flute. That's how we increase the capacity of a of a 20, 240 millimeter machine. This is that bushing I was talking about here. And you can see how it moves. So we're going to check. We can take that off. We're going to pull this off. The bearing race. Bear, with these, um, the, the blade out now, we can see, do we have any damage? We don't see any um, damage on these, on these blades, like chipped, leading edge chips on it. 
So this blade is in, in good shape that way. On the end, if you can see it, there's a little bit of a step. And that's normal. If that step is still there, we don't have bearing wear. But if that step has disappeared, that means this rotor is moving around too much and it's touching the end of the blade. Or the end of the blade is touching the inside of the groove, the bottom, it's bottoming out. And so it's showing wear there on the end. So that step is normal. This bearing here, this bearing here, we can pull this retainer out and using a little bit of a jack bar inside there, we can slowly pry that out and replace it. If you're replacing the bearings, like a bearing kit will include that. This race, which you pull off of there with a puller, and then you can heat it up a little bit and it'll drop on, like with a, like a bearing heater. These bearings, on the end, pull this off, and these bearings, you can pull these six bolts off, and then these bearings drop out of here. So a, a blade kit with bearings would come with a new blade, new bushings, new bearings, new O-rings, new roller bearing, new roller bearing here, a new race for it, and of course the new blade. But you can also buy just the blade, you can buy just the bushing, and you can buy a blade kit, which will be a blade and a bushing and all the O-rings and gaskets.